So in this video we're going to talk about the bridge and how to and how to hold the cue on your bridge hand. So there's lots of different ways to hold the bridge hand and it also depends on which shot you're playing on how you would have your hand on the table. For example, if I was playing with topspin on the cue ball, I would have my bridge hand raised higher from the bed of the table as you can see my hands moving up and down. If I was playing with topspin, it needs to be higher because I need to get higher on the cue ball to hit with topspin. If I was playing in the middle of the cue ball, I would slightly lower my bridge hand like this so it's now flatter to the bed of the table which allows me to get to the middle of the cue ball. If I was playing with bottom on the cue ball, I would lower my hand even further to the bed of the table like this. You can see my hand going up and down, lower it even further which allows me to get to the bottom of the cue ball to play with backspin. If you're playing with excess backspin, obviously you need to get even lower onto the cue ball. It's important that your hand is quite flat because otherwise if your hand's still high up in the end, you're trying to get low onto the cue ball. As you can see now, the cue's now coming at an angle and you've got chance of playing with side spin. So it needs to be flat to the bed to play with bottom, in the middle to play with the middle, and high to play with the top spin. So is the back of your hand actually firm on the table as well as your, as your fingers or is your back of the, yeah. your hand raised up? It's always the back of the hand, so the, the, the palm of the hand is always flush to the table, which is like the, the, the anchor point basically, it's like stability on the table. The most important thing as well is a lot of people don't actually put the thumb onto the first finger, so as you can see my thumb there is moving, it has to be pressed up against the first finger which allows the cue then to have a have a V shape if you like which you would have in a rest so it creates a V shape which the cue then sits in so therefore it can't go any other way other than backwards or forwards the only time that you would have the palm of the hand raised off the table is if you, would, is if you were bridging over a ball so if we've got a ball here and the cue ball's here obviously with the palm of my hand on the table I can't get to the cue ball so to get to the cue ball I need to allow this hand to raise up in the air. It's also important to, to, to bury the fingers into the table because any movement either way on the hand will mean you, you, you either touching the ball. So fingers raised up in the, in, in, the, in the hair there. You can see my hand is quite firm against the, the bed of the table. And again, the finger now gets pressed still against the first finger. The thumb, sorry, gets pressed there. And then as you can see, the cue sits in the V shape again and it allows me to get elevation to get to the top of the cue ball. So if you're trying to do a backspin shot, some people find that they have that they tend to chip the cue ball up mm. rather than getting backspin on it. Yeah. It actually chips up off the mm. surface of the table. What what's causing that and what should they do to stop it? Yeah, well that comes back to what I was just explaining with it's on it's on the height of the fingers or on the height of the hand on the bed of the table so if you're trying to get to the bottom of the cue ball you need to flatten the hand out so it's quite flat on the table as you can see my knuckles there are quite flat if I was playing with top spin my knuckles would be quite high up in the air if I was playing with bottom spin I would lower the hand out so flatten the hand to the bed of the table the palm of the hand is still on, on touching the bed of the table which allows me to get lower the reason why people chip the cue ball up in the, you know chip the cue ball up in the air is because they still play with the hand quite high up in the air as if they're playing with topspin but now the cue has to be striking down onto the cue ball so what happens is it causes a loop so as I'm queuing up like this as you come back, loops that's the reason why people chip the cue ball up in the air so the hand has to be flat onto the table so the cue is parallel to where you're striking the cue ball and it allows you to pull it back and push it through in one straight line so you see in American pool people will be using a loop style bridge. Yeah. What, why would they do that and why do you not really see that in English eight ball? Yeah, well, I've got an American pool cue here. And the reason why American cue, cues basically allow you to use what they call the loop bridge is because the shaft from there to there is basically the same thickness. So when you loop over the, 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 the shaft, it's all one size so it allows it to run smoothly through the fingers with no gaps in between the fingers that's why a lot of the American people use the loop bridge if you were to try and use the loop bridge on my English 8 ball cue for example the taper of my shaft is thicker there than it is there 
So if you look at the difference of, a, of a, an English queue and an American queue, you can see how much mine tapers and how the American queue stays the same all the way through the shaft. So with the English queue, if I'm trying to use the loop bridge, as I draw the queue back, there now becomes a really large gap in between my fingers. So therefore the queue can move side to side. So to use the loop bridge with an English pool queue is really, really difficult because of the taper of the shaft. So it's a lot easier having it sitting on the on the on the finger touching the thumb touching the finger and therefore there can be no movement. What's the reason for loop, for using a loop bridge? Um, well, it's just something which has originated with the American players, but the loop bridge again, it's exactly the same. You, you, the the bed of your hand is is planted firmly onto the table, and it just allow. It's just another. It's just another device, basically, of pushing the cue through in a straight line. It's just easier to 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 get by with a with an American cue because of the the taper of the shaft is exactly the same. With an American, uh, with an English eight ball cue, I wouldn't advise to use the loop bridge just because it allows too much movement when you when you draw the cue back, as you can see there between my hands. The cue there goes to probably about nine millimeters, as in when the cue's there, it's probably more like sixteen or seventeen millimeters. So when you draw the cue back, there's probably eight or nine millimeters movement in between the fingers, as opposed to when you're using the American cue. For more videos from Gareth Potts, please visit homeleisuredirect.com.